Hi, my name is Olivia. I'm one of the outreach officers at Magdalen College, and today I'm going to give you a personal statement workshop. Um, this is geared towards applying to highly selective universities or highly selective courses like medicine. So uh, there will be some mention of how to write a personal statement for Oxford, but the tips I'm going to give you will be useful for any personal statement. Uh, so the aims for this workshop are that you understand what needs to go into a personal statement. Uh, that I can provide you with all the tips possible to give you the best chance of writing the best personal statement. Um, and we're also, by the end of this presentation, hopefully you will have actually written a little bit of your personal statement. It'll be quite rough, you might just have one paragraph, but it will give you something to go off in the future. So for this, you're going to need a pen and paper, so please get one ready. Uh, please take notes as well, as well as doing the tasks. Um, so what is a personal statement? It is part of your UCAS application for university. It is 4,000 characters and 47 lines. This is kind of roughly one side of A4. So it's not very long, you've not got much space, um, which can be reassuring at this stage if you're not sure what you're going to put in there. But uh, hopefully by the end of kind of drafting your personal statement, you'll have absolutely loads to put in. Um, this is your chance to explain to universities why you have chosen the course that you have. This is a good time to say that if you are applying for different courses at different universities, you need to be aware that your statement will go to all of them. Now, there are different ways to navigate it. It might be small differences in your courses, like you're applying for history and economics at one university, but just history at another. Um, it might be that you're applying for something more specific at one university than another. Uh, so there's Anglo-Saxon and Norse studies at Cambridge, uh, which most universities don't offer. So you might be applying for that at Cambridge, but then different courses at different universities. Uh, so you need to factor this in. One way is to just try and think about the things that link the different subjects because you'll, there'll probably be things that do link the different courses you've chosen, otherwise you wouldn't have chosen them. Um, and try and make sure that you're appealing to those topics, those links between them in your statement. Um, and this should kind of give you a good way into writing a statement that will apply to different courses. It is a good thing to remember not to apply for too many kind of broad different courses you know you wouldn't apply to maths at one university and english at another if you're thinking of doing something like that you need to really think about your course choice really think about your university choice and why it is that these you're applying for such different courses so how do you get started um, and when i say getting started i mean about your first paragraph or your first line well the first thing to say is keep it short you actually don't need an opening paragraph in the same way that you would for a different essay. This just wastes characters and you don't have many of them. So if you would prefer to go straight into a main paragraph where you start describing something that you enjoy about your subject, then please feel free. If you do have something to say as an introduction, that's fine, but keep it short. Um, if you are thinking about how you're going to phrase this first sentence, then think about what is the main appeal of your course. If you had to write one sentence, maybe this is a good exercise to do, just write one sentence about what appeals to you about this course. Another thing you can do is you can include a specific example. So, you know, if you have done some work experience and you want to say it was this work experience that made me want to do this subject, you can say that. Um, you do need to be careful, though, as my kind of don'ts list will show, about picking something that is not relevant to you. So do not use a quote or example if it hasn't genuinely influenced you. The people who are reading these at different universities read thousands and thousands of them. What is memorable about a personal statement is that your interest in the subject comes across. So you don't need to use a famous quote or some kind of fancy example to prove that you are interested. It's just about the things that you have done, as simple as they may be. Um, please don't reference how long you have been interested in a subject. A lot of people think that they need to prove they have been interested in a subject since the moment they were born or since they were six, and it's just not accurate. And it doesn't matter how long you've been interested in the subject. It's all about how interested you are. That is enough. Um, so here's a good example. Uh, how many times was this, this opener used in one year? So the opening sentence is, ever since I accidentally burnt holes in my pyjamas after experimenting with a chemistry set on my eighth birthday, I have always had a passion for science. So that was used 234 times in a single year. It was taken straight off Google. 
Um, so don't do this, because if you look at this opening sentence, it actually includes all the things we don't want. It's not very concise, doesn't really tell me anything about your interest in the subject specifically. Um, it uses a specific example that isn't true, something you just found on the internet. It references how long you have enjoyed the subject, and it's probably not true. It's going back to the eighth birthday. This is kind of a bit silly. It's also aiming to stand out and be memorable because it's something a bit more dramatic, like burning holes in your pyjamas. It's not something you do every day. Um, and you don't need to be memorable like this. So don't write a sentence like that. If you are choosing to write an opening sentence, keep it short and just keep it focused on what interests you. So what should you be writing in the main body of your personal statement? Well, uh, Oxford would like to see about 80% of your personal statement be based on academic activities and content that you're interested in and that you have done and about 20% on extracurricular. This extracurricular paragraph is mainly for the benefit of other universities. Oxford and Cambridge and other highly selective universities will really be focused on your academic content. But we realise that some universities will like to see that you have done things outside of your subject. So what counts as extracurricular are things like sports that aren't relevant to your degree, uh, music or hobbies, things that don't relate to the course that you have picked. This might be work experience, if the work experience was uh, based in something that again is not relevant to your course same with if you have a job or if you've done any kind of duke of edinburgh awards so anything like that is extracurricular we'd recommend kind of lumping this in one paragraph at the end now if any of this extracurricular is relevant to your course maybe it's that you play in a band and you're applying for music things like that that would come under supercurricular that would be the kind of thing we'd like to see in your academic uh, part of your statement so when I say academic, what do I mean? So this includes explaining why you have chosen your course. It's about building on your schoolwork. So not just talking about what you have learned in school, but going a little bit beyond this. You're welcome to talk about your A-levels. You can, if you like, describe why your A-levels are relevant to the uh, course that you have picked. But really, we want to see that you're going beyond your schoolwork. You know, Then it kind of really proves to us that you are interested in the subject that you have picked. Um, we also want to see topics that you've explored outside of school. So this could be a topic that doesn't relate to your schoolwork at all. Something completely different that you are interested in and you have explored in your own time. With this comes relevant activities and work experience. For degrees like medicine, for example, work experience is more important. Um, but work experience can apply to a variety of different degrees depending on that experience. And that is a great thing to put in. Um, by relevant activities, I could mean having done some outreach provision or have gone to a lecture at a university. Um, that is another great way of proving your interest and adding kind of academic content to your personal statement. So things this doesn't need to include, this doesn't need to include references to expensive subscriptions or workplaces somewhere prestigious. You don't have to have been to a crown court or visited parliament if you're applying to politics or law. It can just be something local, something simple, it doesn't have to be anything that costs you any money. And it also doesn't have to reference trips abroad. Now, if you have done any of these things and would like to talk about them, then great, please do. But be aware that that is not a necessity. We don't look um, at the prestigiousness of your work experience or your activity. What we want to see is what you have gained from that activity, not necessarily the calibre of that activity itself. So here's some examples of supercurricular activities. The main thing to say about supercurricular activities is that you should do what works for you. If you're a visual learner, then watch a documentary. If you like to listen to things, you know, maybe you catch a bus a lot and it's great to just listen to something, then listen to podcasts. If you want to go on websites, if you want to read things, if you want to go on trips and go on work experience, you've got to do what's best for you. And it's good to try out a few different things, be able to maybe reference a podcast and reference a book. Um, and it'll really help you figure out what type of learning you are if you do a variety of activities so there's lots of really good examples on here ted talks fantastic 10 minutes long um there's loads and loads of really good podcasts and really good websites and really good documentaries by the bbc i'd really recommend having a look at them uh, jstor is a kind of journal searching uh, website so you can go on there and you can get i think six free journal articles um, and these will be quite academic but it can just give you a little bit of a start so go on there and search some journals and oxplore is an oxford related resource 
um, and this has big questions on it so it makes you think about how different subjects interact so that's a really good starting point for thinking about supercurricular activities so I'm going to give you a task now. Um, I want you to list some of the supercurriculars you have already done. Uh, if you've not really had a chance to do anything outside of school yet, then list me a th few things you've done in school, a few topics you've discovered, or a few books you've read during your schoolwork. But um, hopefully you've read a book outside your subject or you've looked at something, even if it was going to a museum a long time ago. Um, so I want you to make a list of the topics that interest you about your subject and then make a list of supercurricular activities. So this should take you two minutes. So that should have been about two minutes there. Um, I hope you've got a good list going and you've really thought about what it is that interests you about your subject and what supercurriculars you might have already done. So now I want you to think about these three questions and we're going to work with these three questions throughout the rest of the workshop. So this is one, what interests you about this topic? So you've got that list of topics in front of you. Uh, in a second, I'm going to get you to think about what really interests you about each one. Um, secondly, what activity have you done to show your interest and what did you learn from it? So that will be part of your supercurricular list. Uh, what activity have you done? What topic does it relate to? And what did you learn from that activity? And then thirdly, can you compare this to something else you've done or studied? Can you show that you are linking things up? Can you show that you have done more than one thing about a topic, read more than one book or looked at it from different angles? And that is really what we're going to build on. And this is these three questions should kind of be the base of all your academic paragraphs. So here is an example that I have put together. Uh, I studied history at Oxford, graduated a couple of years ago. Um, and this is something that I enjoyed while I was there. So that's what I've put together on this list. Um, so the topic I picked is gender history. And I've said that it interests me uh, because it's a relatively new area of study. So can, you can see here, I've just put this in note form for now. And then we can develop it into a paragraph later on. Um, the Virgin Warrior, that's a book that I've read about Joan of Arc and I've kind of appraised this book, I've thought about it. Um, I've said that it's a very positive account of Joan of Arc. I've linked it to a specific siege that um, people often cite when they're talking about Joan of Arc. Um, and I've also mentioned how she is the most well-documented woman of her class. So I've really thought about what I have taken from this book, what I think of the book, and I've kind of put that in note form. So I've also mentioned some further research. I've cited another historian, Almond, and how he doesn't think that Joan of Arc was as important as uh, Taylor did. And this has kind of just given me a note form that later on I'm going to be able to turn into a paragraph. 
So now for a science example, this was written by a biomedical scientist. Um, they say that their favourite topic was neurology and they are interested in this because of the complexity of the nervous system. Uh, then they go on to talk about the kind of activity they've done to relate to this and this was a placement on a stroke ward and specifically what they found interesting about that was their expectation of how a patient might be from having looked at their CT scan which was of their brain and how the patient actually was when they met them. Um, and for further research, they then went and read a book on neurology by Oliver Sacks. And you see really short, brief bullet points that are really going to kind of drive us forward when we're writing our personal statement. So now I want you to do this. I want you to pick a topic, pick a relevant supercurricular activity and answer the three questions that I showed you before. Um, I want you to try and do this for at least one topic. You've only got five minutes, but if you've got any extra time, then please do it for another. So I'm going to give you five minutes and I'm just going to put those three questions back up so you can work on those.
So that's been about five minutes. Uh, you should now have three bullet points that answer the questions that were on the previous slide relating to one topic and at least one supercurricular activity you've done. And this is going to form the basis of your first paragraph for your first personal statement. So now I want you to think about writing your paragraph. So here are a few tips for you. I want you to discuss, not list things. When you come to write your personal statement, you might find that you've actually got quite a lot to talk about. Maybe on your favourite topics, you have read or watched quite a few things by this point. Now, it is much better to pick a couple of these and discuss them in detail than it is to list all the different things that you have done. You'll not get brownie points for having done the most activities. It's all about what you have taken from these activities. So I want you to kind of create a proper discussion in your personal statement instead of just a list. Uh, linking to this, you need to have depth rather than breadth. It would be better to talk about just one or two topics of interest in your personal statement and really kind of dive into them and talk about the supercurriculars in a bit more detail than it would to have talked about lots and lots of different topics. You don't need to prove your interest in the breadth of the course. Most of the courses you're going to be studying involve a wide range of topics, some that you'll like and some that you'll like a bit less. You don't need to prove that you're interested in them all. We want you to pick the ones that you're most interested in and then talk about them in depth. A really important thing, and I'll keep emphasising this, is read or do everything you claim to. Please do not put anything in your statement that isn't true. A big reason for this, if you're applying for Oxford or Cambridge uh, or indeed medicine, basically anything that interviews, is that you may be asked about it in your interview. You don't want to arrive at your interview and be asked about a book you've actually not read. That'll just not be very fun at all. And you're doing yourself a disservice because you could have spent the time reading the book. If the idea of reading or doing an activity based on your course fills you with dread and you don't want to do it and you're encouraged to kind of put things in your personal statement that aren't true as a result, that is probably because you're applying for the wrong course. So if you are feeling like, oh, I really don't want to do this super curricular activity, then it's probably because you've not put enough thought into your course or you're kind of going down the wrong avenue. That's completely fine. Just make sure that you have a good think about whether you do want to apply for that course. So finally, I want you to be critical and analytical. As the examples illustrated earlier, you need to really think about the supercurricular activities you're doing. You can't just say, I have read this or I have been to this placement and I enjoyed it. We need you to know that you have actually thought about it. What did you think of that book? Did you agree with the podcast? Do you have a different angle that you would like to bring in? Did, you, did it help you understand a topic you already knew about a bit differently? There are lots of different things you can take from these supercurricular activities and we need you to be analytical. We want to know your opinion. We want to know what you took from the activity. So here's an example paragraph for you. Uh, it's based on the history example we had earlier and I'm just going to give you a minute to read it. So it starts by saying that gender history emerged out of 20th century women's history. This is important because it shows that I know a little bit about the historical background of what I am talking about, of gender history. And this would apply for most humanities topics, that you know a little bit about the background of the field and where it comes from. If you are doing something on post-colonial literature, for example, it's important to know what post-colonial literature is and what this has kind of come out of. So after that opening sentence to my paragraph which wasn't just an introduction to my thoughts it was actually an interesting piece of information that is relevant to the rest of the paragraph and that's kind of what any introduction you have in throughout your personal statement should be like but after that I've gone straight in to talk about this book I've read you can see I've actually shortened the title for this book and um, the book is much longer than the virgin warrior it's something like the life and death of Joan of Arc afterwards I thought I didn't need those words because it's very clear what book I'm talking about from this little bit of text. So that's what I've put in. I've then gone on to say that it's a laudatory biography. This just means it's positive. So there I've shown 
what Taylor's opinion of Joan of Arc is. And then I've gone on to explain why. I've said that she presents her to be a hero, particularly in the French victories in the 1420s, so I've been specific. Um, but then I've gone on to say my opinion. So I've said, well, maybe she's overly positive about Joan just because she's a very well-documented woman, um, particularly a well-documented woman for her class. So that has illustrated my opinion and that maybe I don't agree with Taylor or that I have thought critically about how she has presented the history. I know that her presentation of Joan of Arc's life isn't the only one. Um, and then finally, I've finished the paragraph by linking to some further research I've done. So I haven't said specifically what this is, but you could very well say I've read this book and be a bit more specific or this documentary. But I've just name dropped another historian who I've said has paid much less attention to Joan. And I've mentioned that they're a military historian. So this shows that the different historians have got different views. And I've really linked back to what I said at the start about historical figures. Now, you could add lots more to this paragraph, but this is just a really short paragraph that kind of shows that I've been critical, that I've done supercurricular activities, and I've picked a specific topic that I'm interested in. So similarly, here's the paragraph for biomedicine. I'll just give you a minute to read that through. So like the history paragraph, this gets straight into the main body of the academic content you want to talk about. It goes straight away into saying that I've done some work experience on a stroke ward, it is specific, and then talks about the CT scan that um, has been of particular interest to this student. You'll actually notice that this paragraph is done in a different order to the one previous and to the way that we did our questions earlier. It actually explains how the interest in neurology came about. So in the questions earlier, you've got neurology at the top as being the topic you are interested in and then going on to say what you've done, which is the work experience. And this student's flipped it around. So it's gone through to say that you did this work experience. Um, you had this experience with a patient and the CT scan that surprised you. You learned something and you've said exactly what it was and how this led to an interest in neurology. This student didn't just go on a work experience placement and get interested in neurology and then kind of forget about it. They went away and found a book and they read about it. And this really proves to me that you're interested. Um, nowhere in this paragraph does the student say, I am interested in biomedicine, because they don't need to, because it's really clear to me that they are. And from the end of this, you could kind of go on to talk a little bit more about Oliver Sacks' book if you'd like to, or you could go on and move, uh, move on to another paragraph. So now it's your turn uh, with the tips that I have given you on a few slides, remembering to be critical and analytical. With those examples in mind, I want you to take the notes you made earlier and start writing a paragraph. Now, this is not going to be perfect. The first draft of any personal statement is probably going to be terrible. That is fine. That is what a first draft is for. Um, but you might as well get started now. So just write a paragraph. Don't think too much about it. And I'm going to give you 10 minutes to do that.
So that's been about 10 minutes now. Well done. Uh, hopefully you should now have your first paragraph for the first draft of your personal statement. So the hard part's over, you have actually made a start, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, this paragraph might not be great, that doesn't matter. This will give you a kind of building block to really work through your whole statement. So if you kind of approach every paragraph like this, this should be a really great way to build up your statement. And then the more you redraft it, the more you get people to look at it, you can kind of nuance it, you can make it longer or shorter, and you can add different bits in. But this is a great way to get started. So well done for doing that. So now I'm going to talk to you about um, reducing your word count, whether you think you've got loads to say in your personal statement or whether you currently don't have much. I promise you by the end, you will be cutting words out of your statement. And there are lots of useful tips to help you do this. Uh, bear in mind also that these tips are just really good practice for essay writing. So if you're writing an essay and you're trying to make it more concise, um, these are great tips. Um, the big thing that you can do is to reorder your sentence. So this is just taking the different parts of your sentence, the different clauses, and swapping them round, putting different things at the start. You'll find this takes out lots of little words that you didn't actually need. By doing this, this also can often help you take out the I. Um, another thing is don't repeat yourself check your sentences if you've got words that you repeat quite a lot if you're saying interest and then interesting interests um, or fascination is one people use a lot if you're saying that a lot it probably means you're repeating the same point and repeating words is just a bit clunky anyway so make sure you don't repeat yourself watch out for that and take out anywhere that you have repeated yourself don't use run on sentences or too many commas. If you have got quite a lot of commas in a sentence or the sentence goes on for four or more lines, it is probably too long. Um, a great way to cut out words is by shortening your sentences because you lose little words in the middle, similar to when you reorder your sentences. So putting full stops in there not only makes your personal statement more readable, uh, it will help you to shorten it as well. Um, and finally, as I keep saying, no unnecessary introductions and conclusions. So only put an introduction or conclusion if it is relevant, if it gets to the point, a bit like the example should. So here are two examples for you. So this was taken from the history paragraph we read earlier, um, and I've kind of written two different openings to the paragraph. So I'm just going to let you read through these quickly. So you'll notice that the first version is, I think, objectively less good than the second. The second is the one you've already read. It's in the paragraph example I used earlier. But you can see that these are really different, even though if you have a look, they have exactly the same pieces of information. In them. The first version puts that in two sentences, whereas the second one has it in one clear sentence. You can see that I've swapped the order of the sentence. So instead of starting with I am interested in gender history, which used quite a lot of words, I have swapped it to start with gender history emerged, da da da, and later in the sentence have put which interests me. This has made it much, much so shorter. Another thing to bear in mind is uh, where we put things in the sentence uh, in relation to each other. So, for example, in the first version, I've got field of women's history in the early 20th century. And in the second version, I've got early 20th century women's history. This cuts out a couple of the little words, and that's just by swapping the two elements of this phrase around. Um, you'll notice that the first version repeats interesting. This is kind of quite clunky. It suggests that I'm starting all my sentences in the same way, and I haven't really thought about what interests me. So this version two actually has 15 less words. So if you swapped around lots of your sentences like this, your piece of writing would sound a lot more neat, a lot more concise, and you'd be able to fit more of the academic content in because you have taken out all these unnecessary words that you didn't actually need. So my final bit of advice um, is to be concise, as we've kind of just talked about. When I mean concise, I don't mean making everything as short as possible. Don't try and shorten things if there is no room to shorten them. But you might find throughout writing your statement, there are lots of sentences or paragraphs that are longer than they need to be. So being concise is all about making things as long as they need to be and no longer. Um, proofread. Please proofread your personal statement. Any spelling errors, any grammatical errors will look really bad and they're so easily avoidable. So really proofread. 
I'd also say it's really important to try and get a teacher or someone who can give you some advice to proofread your statement as well. Um, if it is a teacher who does your subject or a subject similar to the course you're applying, that is even better because they'll be able to give you some more specific advice. Um, but it's also really important, I think, to get someone who doesn't do your subject to read your statement. This can be a friend, a parent, a carer, just anyone at all. Um, because they can read for grammatical errors. They can tell you if what you have said has made sense. What I want you to do going forward is keep a list of the supercurricular activities you've done and do it like you did in task one and two. Thinking about what you learned from that supercurricular activity. Think being critical, being analytical of every activity you've done. Also, don't go overboard. You only need a few topics. You only need a few supercurriculars for these different topics. If you go overboard, you might actually have too much to talk about, which will encourage you to um, focus on breadth instead of depth. It will encourage you to focus on lists instead of actually discussing things. And as we've kind of talked about, that's not really what you want. So thank you for listening. I really hope this workshop has been useful. I hope it's given you some good tips and I hope that you have actually got some of your personal statements started. Um, if you have any questions for me at all, you can find me on the end of this email address. So just send me off an email. Um, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask current students at Oxford, whether this is about a personal statement or student life or just anything at all, then if you go on the Maudlin website, and that is uh, the second link on this page, um, you can send current students a question directly um, and they'll get back to you and kind of give you a bit of advice. You can actually find me on there as well. So if you don't want to send me an email, you can send me a message on there too. Kind of one thing we haven't talked about is how to find super curricular activities. I gave you a few examples earlier that will hopefully be helpful for you, but you can find longer lists of resources. If you go on the Maudlin website, there is a resource pack which goes through each Oxford course um, and subject area and has lots of useful podcasts and documentaries and books and websites and activities that you can do. And they're all listed there as kind of ideas for you to get started with super curricular activities. So please have a look at that. There's all sorts of other resource logs like this if you go on the Oxford website and go on their digital resources hub this also lists lots of different supercurricular resources and something called staircase 12 which University College Oxford have made also does the same thing so please look at that too uh, thank you for listening and I hope this is helpful good luck writing your statements